Hi, and welcome to another Honest Review. And today I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is fragrance. In fact, it's very surprising when I think about it that I haven't discussed fragrance before on this channel because I am like a perfume addict. Um, there are some scents out there that I could literally get high on just from inhaling. And I have to say that several of them are made by um, the brand that I'm talking about today, which is Lalabo. Lalabo is a really interesting brand actually, because it's really quite um, new in the making uh, relative to other big perfume houses. So it started out um, in around 2006. Um, it was a couple of guys who paired um, what is the expertise of the perfume powerhouse that is Grass in France. And if you've uh, never been to that little town um, where a lot of the, the big uh, perfume houses produce their products, it's well worth a visit. It's a very beautiful part of the world. Um, and for fragrance lovers like me, there's a lot of tours that you can go on and things to do. So Le Labo took the expertise um, uh, that, that is available in that town and paired it with the urban cool of a, a New York store. And it is a, a business that grew really quickly. Um, it came to the attention of Estee Lauder and they acquired um, Le Labo less than 10 years later um, in 2014. So it's now a worldwide brand. Um, you know, they have stores throughout the world, including in Edinburgh, where um, I live. Um, we have several stores in London, throughout the US, Europe, beyond. Um, so huge perfume brand. The first time I ever came across it was about five years ago when we were on holiday in California. And we were walking down one of my favourite shopping streets, Abbott Kinney. Um, if you ever go to LA, you have to go to Abbott Kinney. It's a brilliant street with loads of independent stores. Um, it's not all designer. It's just really kind of quirky, contemporary stuff. Well worth a visit. So we were walking down Abbott Kinney when my nostrils were met by the most heavenly fragrances coming out of this store. And I just literally was like... <laughs> followed my nostrils directly into the store. And um, I think the first uh, fragrance that I must have sniffed was this one, Santal. Um, and it is a beautiful fragrance. You've got sandalwood in there and it's leathery and it's just, it's like nothing you've ever experienced before. So I got my nose around that. The um, store assistant must have thought it was absolutely crazy because I was literally like, um, but she was busy with another couple of, of people. So I just sort of caught her attention and said, you know, how much for the perfume? And, and um, I don't remember the exact price. I'm going back five years ago, but let's say it was around $200. So I remember just kind of going, mm, I'll leave it. Um, so off I went, but I did remember the name, you know, La Labo. And I thought it was just like an Abbott Kinney thing. I thought it was a local thing. It was quite naive. Um, so I forgot about it. And then that Christmas I had never said anything to my sister about it. That Christmas, my sister gave me a discovery set for La Labo. And I was like, how did you know? And um, she had visited the store in London and loved it. And she bought my mom and I um, this set. It has five of the classic fragrances in it, which included Santal. Um, also Rose, which is a beautiful, it's not that, that, when you think of rose perfumes, you just think of these kind of sweet, sickly, vanilla -y. It's not like that. Um, it's musky, heady delight. Uh, so there was rose in there and there was also another one called the Noir. Um, you have these 1.5 milliliter little testers. And um, our whole family fell in love with these fragrances, including my husband, who he was the first one to go out and get the bottle. Uh, so he got the bottle of Santal, 50 milliliters for £127. I mean, that's a lot of money. But there is a way to say, because as he found out when he bought the bottle in the store, he can get 20% off by bringing that bottle back for a refill next time. 
You know, in more recent years, it has almost become the norm for perfumes to be priced highly. The prices have really gone up um, in the last 10, 20 years. Uh, and in recent years, you know, it is not unusual to have to pay over £100 for a bottle of perfume, I have to say. So what now, when it comes to value, I think it is more about how long lasting are the fragrances? What is the quality of the products that they're putting into them? Um, you know, these are sort of paraben free, high quality oils. Um, in the case of the rose perfume, for example, I read that it was made with hand picked rose petals from grass. So you're getting good quality stuff here, long lasting. The first bottle of fragrance I bought was the Noir, um, which is like heaven in a bottle. You know, a lot of these fragrances are unisex and you really just can't go wrong with them. If you like the kind of herby, musky, heady scents, then Le Labo is the brand for you. So Noir has bergamot, fig, cedarwood, bay leaves. Stunning, absolutely stunning fragrance. Um, there's a little bit of tobacco in there I love as well. The most recent one I got was Christmas. Um, I got this uh, patchouli fragrance. Now, it is really different. The first thing you smell from patchouli, and this is something that these fragrances have in common, there's always one big note that kind of leaps out at you and then it settles. Well, the big note with patchouli is actually like burning bonfires. It's, it's firewood, practically. Um, and it's very unusual to say the least when my son first smelt it he was like that's disgusting never wear that again but it settles um into something that's kind of much more sophisticated so lovely i don't wear it day to day because of the price but it's long lasting that was bought at christmas as i say so perfumes 127 pounds for 50 milliliters there's not not everything in the range is super expensive there's uh, lots of great options for gifts um, among them are the candles. Um, I have two. There is this one, uh, Laurier, that I um, was given as a Christmas gift, what a lovely Christmas gift to get. So this is £52 for a 245 gram candle. Um, and this scent is absolutely lovely. It's a real herby mix of, um, there's eucalyptus, rosemary, um, there's clove, so many good things in there. When I first sniffed it, I was like, mm, I don't know, it was it was just too unusual. Um, but I love it now and it is such good value because you like this and within 10 minutes, it fills the room. And so I often just light it for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, and then that's it. The, the, the room is filled with fragrance and the house is filled with fragrance practically. That's quite different to uh, another one I bought recently, which is the Palo Santo. Now I bought, ordered this online, again, 52 pounds, and it is a much more subtle scent. It's a patchouli fragrance. It's very lovely, but it really doesn't fill a room. And so now I'm looking at something that is poor value for the money. So what I would say, the candles, is if, if like me, you know, you're not buying 52 pound candles on a regular basis, you know, 52 pounds is a significant amount to you. I would go um, for some of the classic heavier fragrances. Um, I had a Santal sa um, candle in the past and that filled a room within 10 minutes as well. So it's a good value one to get. If you're just looking for something more subtle, you're somebody who buys expensive candles, you let them burn for a long time, actually the palette Palo Santo would be quite good. The other thing to mention about the candles, because this happened with both, is that um, they didn't burn down evenly. Um, which poses us a bit of a problem, again, within that price range. So this one, with every candle, I trim the wick and I let it burn for at least an hour when I first get it because that is going to help ensure that you get a consistent burn. I did that with this one, but it still hasn't burned evenly. So I've got a lot of unused wax around the edges, which is really, really wasting the money. I think I may write to the labo about this one. The same thing happened with the Laurier, but I went round when, uh, the first time and took out the excess 
with a teaspoon as I did on this one and it's burnt consistently ever since but it's just not happening for me with this one um, and I think at 52 pounds that's just too much money uh, to let that happen so I'm going to write to them about that and one thing to flag up as well is that um, when my husband who buys them from our local store he one of the bottles that he bought he felt didn't have as strong a fragrance as usual. So he took it back and said that to them and they remade the bottle. The Le Labo will produce the um, fragrances in store for you. So they'll mix the oil and the fragrance there and then so you get the freshest possible product. And, you know, it's, it's best to buy in the store if you can because if you have any issues, you can take it back. Back to the candles. Um, you get a £44 version, um, which has 195 grams, um, and that's in a little tin, uh, but it's not as good value when you consider that the um, glass candles, 245 grams, are £52. Now, for those of you with big wallets, you can also buy a £320 candle, which is a four wick, 1.2 kilogram, um, in a ceramic pot, and um, how lovely if you can afford it. Uh, let's just hope that one burns, easy, um, burns evenly. I've also bought a few things from the um, face, hair and body range. And again, brilliant for gifts. So recently, uh, because we've been staying at home more due to the various uh, coronavirus restrictions, um, these are £10 each. So I bought a shampoo and conditioner from the Hinoki range. Um, divine scent, like everything. Completely unique, different, oh, just beautiful. Um, this one is sort of macadamia. Um, in fact, that's avocado, that's the conditioner. They smell pretty similar though. And this is the macadamia. Um, stunning. And um, <laughs> this is 85 milliliters. So there's not much in the bottle. If I show you the 50 milliliter perfume, you know, it's not going to last a long time. Um, however, I reckon I'll get maybe about eight to 10 washes out of that. So I'm using it at the weekend as a little treat. Used it this morning. My hair is light and shiny, so it does a good job. Um, but that fragrance is lasting. So this will stay fragranced. Love it. Uh, for the next 48 hours. Uh, we also have a Santal shower gel that my husband got um, for Christmas uh, from an aunt. Thank you for that. Um, and he was keeping it good, so he only um, uses it now and then, but probably he's left it too long because this is nine months on and that fragrance is beginning to wane a little bit. So it says you get 12 months freshness since opening, but um, I would try and use that up within six months if you can. But that's about, I think it's £37 for this bottle of shower gel. You get smaller bottles in other scents uh, within the range as well. So check them out. Um, I think that shower gel start from about £20 a bottle. Uh, you get mini lotions, body lotions for £11. So lots in there for different price ranges. And um, believe me, Perfume fans will thank you for it if you buy that for a gift. So that rounds up um, my review of Le Labo. I hope you found it helpful. If you're uh, looking for a new fragrance or you wanted to try out something for, from the range, my big recommendation would be to get that discovery set if you can't go into the store. Um, and that will let you uh, try out some of the different fragrances and, and make your decision from there. There are lots more reviews like this one on the channel, so do check them out if you have the time. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.